If most of you are a little like me, you're quite fed up with all these hunting shows. You're tired of watching people harvest massive, mature deer year in and year out with multiple opportunities per season to harvest. You're tired of watching that textbook scenario on the TV and feeling guilty for filling a tag on a lesser deer that wasn't the 160 you saw on TV. You're tired of the business of hunting and longing for the sport. But if a little of you are a lot like me, then you are most tired of watching wealthy landowners tell you how to succeed when their circumstances are nothing like yours. The rut is in, guys. Man. The jabroni you see on the screen is me, Ryan Odenbrett, tuning in for the first episode of Average American Hunter. In 2017, I had the idea to develop an informational outdoor web series for the outdoorsmen who lack representation in the hunting industry. I wanted to make a show for the average American hunter, whose circumstances mirror mine. People who hunt public land, small private parcels, or large acreage with lots of hunting pressure. 99% of the hunts you see on this show will take place in the mountains of Virginia, a state not known for producing the caliber of deer as, say, Kansas or Iowa. Don't get me wrong, Virginia is enjoyable with the eastern turkeys, white-tailed deer, and black bears abundant, but it isn't marketed as a hunter's paradise like the Midwest region. I've lived in Virginia for five years now, and had more success than when I lived in Missouri. I always went trapping and fishing with my father, but never got the opportunity to sit behind the gun until age 10. I was successful for the first four years and even went on a few elk hunts. When I hit high school and college, my hunting slowed down dramatically as I would only go three to four times per year. And although I could only hunt a handful of times per year, I always managed to achieve my objective. Find game, harvest game. So I'm going to share with you the knowledge of my sources. The conservation department says wild pigs can destroy habitats and spread diseases to livestock. They will even kill and eat wildlife like snakes, turkeys, and even young deer. They've become such a problem, the conservation department is trapping feral hogs all over the Ozarks. One hog will eat, you know, three, four times more than what a deer would. Scott Odenbred is a taxidermist near Cassville, Missouri, who helps the conservation department with trapping. It makes a good sport, you know, good time. He also meets many hunters who say wild hogs are a challenging animal to track. They're, they're pretty savvy. Where the hogs have, have come in, uh, the turkey numbers have just drastically declined. This is my old man best outdoorsman I know, and if there is one reason for why he's so knowledgeable, I'd say it's due to his profession, taxidermy. For over 20 years, he has soaked in outdoor knowledge from thousands of clients, and in 2010, that knowledge put him in the record books. On a cool October day, my old man harvested the second largest archery buck in the state of Missouri. This 28-point palmated four-year-old giant was shot a mere four yards away. The buck netted 250 inches. Worst thing is, I refused the chance to sit in that stand on that evening. The monster drew in the attention of North American Whitetail Magazine and eventually Rusty Johnson of Buckmaster Magazine. He scored the buck and wrote an article that started with, Try telling Ryan Odenbrett that life is fair. Thanks, Rusty. Even though I missed my opportunity, my old man had a destiny to fulfill with that buck as he had shot the antler off the year before. All in all, my old man is my well of knowledge, but to better understand these mountains, I needed to know some mountain men. Enter the Blue Ridge Boys. Hey guys, this is Kyle from Blue Ridge Boys Outdoors. Pow! 
dropped him right there. And this fella right here is my best friend. Some call him Kyle Butler, but many call him Carl Wayne. Kyle was born and raised in Virginia, and has over 20 years of hunting experience. I've known Kyle for about five years now. Kyle was a member of a hunting club called the Blue Ridge Boys when I recruited him to the team. For our team, he is easily the best looking of the group, but also the hardest working guy I know. Kyle is our public land expert. He has the most success amongst the three of us and the million acres that is George Washington National Forest. Kyle is happily married to the hardest working woman I know too. The fools even got married on November 4th and made me miss an evening hunt, but I wouldn't miss it for the world. Kyle works for a chemical company based out of Virginia where he manages many restaurants throughout the state. This guy knows no off days, and if you're not careful, he will easily leave you in the dust. Hey, what's up everybody? Ryan Odenbrett here with my buddy Hunter, and Kid Prodigy over here is going to get it done. The rut is in, guys. What an awesome hunt. At 22 years old, Hunter is the youngest of the group. Hunter also grew up in Virginia. Both Kyle and Hunter grew up on the east side of the Blue Ridge Mountains, then moved to the west side. The kid has hunted for 18 years and has more interest in small game than I ever did. Seriously, the kid takes severe interest in harvesting crows, squirrels, doves, and rabbits. He is also actively working on the coyote control around his properties, managing a few black coyoted coyotes along the way. What this kid brings to the team is charisma and loads of potential. Hunter is currently on his last two semesters at Bridgewater Community College completing a degree in business administration. When all is said and done, and we lie in our graves, Hunter will likely be the most successful outdoorsman of the three of us. So what can you expect from this show? Well, some information and a little entertainment. Some success and some failure. A little cooking and a little starving. Some podcast highlights and some honest product reviews. All in all, we are here to educate by sharing our experiences with you. But no doubt the three of us are learning just as much, if not more. After all, we're just a landscaper, chemical consultant, and college student. Guys with common occupations making a show for the average. Is this thing rolling? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Kyle? Let's go ahead and talk about the 2018 deer season for you. Where do we start? I, for one, have to say you start that. Start opening that deer. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> put an exclamation point on a subject with the uh, cracking the. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. Yeah. 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 You know, give us a description of that first kill permit hunt and what that was like. Well, for me, actually, I'll say this. We're back out here. We're trying to get a couple more stands put up before season starts and there's a couple good spots on this property and uh, we're gonna kind of scout around first we'll show you guys you know what we're looking at but um so we're gonna go over here towards this strawberry patch and then we're gonna go down to where our other stand is and go a little bit uh, further and we're gonna check the trail cameras today too so hopefully we got that big buck that's been coming around we can get a better picture of him ghost buck but um yeah guys so here to get it done today per usual all right so ladder is up as you can see now we just gotta get the stand out All right, as you can see, me and Kyle are about to head out here. Oh, here he comes now.
bag. We got a few stuff we gotta get situated. We just spoke with Daniel. The water's kind of high out here. Um, I don't know. Did you get any of it coming in? Uh, I did not actually get it. You can see it right behind you though. Like you can, and you can hear it. September 17th and I'll never forget this day because it was a year to the date that my mom had passed away. So mm. I knew that I was going to go out into the woods. It's 109. Crossing this creek right here. Just on the hill right here in this little in field. So hopefully Well, I think I hit her. Um, the uh, hunter said saw her go down the video, and apparently there's white belly right there. I can I can see white, but we'll uh, we'll get down here in a second and go see her. first deer of the season. We there it is. I went over and looked at where they had jumped across the creek and right there at the edge, right before it enters the creek, um, there was blood. So, we're gonna have to cross the other way. Let's get to it. It took us about 30 minutes to find her, but we jumped the creek and um, the water was up at that time of year. And um, we tracked over a little bit and Hunter actually ended up uh, locating her. Yeah, buddy. We found her. That's awesome. Let's look at the shot here. Yeah, buddy. Big old nanny goat, she's gonna eat good. Yeah. Picked her up, put her on my back. Mr. Butler carrying him out on his freaking shoulders. Look at this guy. Look at him go. This is going to be the fun part, ladies and gentlemen. We got to get across here. He's got her. Tip my can to you, my man. Appreciate it. And say hey, congratulations on that. All right. So part of the fun of cooking, in my opinion, is when you get home, 
after working all day and you look in the fridge and you're like, what the hell am I gonna make tonight? Tonight, I am going to make kind of a southern fried venison steak over hash browns with an egg on top because you can't go wrong with breakfast. So, let's get started. Like to listen to music while you cook. All right, so we're gonna start with just kinda shredding up these potatoes here. All right, so now that you shredded up the potatoes, kind of put them in a little water bath, let them soak, get all the starches out of it. All right, so I just strained these bad boys. Now that we got that sitting, we're going to take, this is a steak that I cooked earlier this week, a little bit of leftover. We're going to take this and we're going to flatten it, pound it out. All right, so these cutlets are a little bit smaller. Um, it's, come, it's off of the tenderloin. Uh, so, but you can kind of get a, a feel of, you know, what it's gonna look like, just kind of an eighth of an inch. So you can see right here, we've got wheat flour. All right, so I've got my oil heating up um, for frying my bits. go over here and bread it okay all right so I got a little bit more butter over here um, so let that melt down and then I'm gonna kind of patty out my hash browns and all right, well that's doing its thing. I'm gonna see about doing my thing over here. All right, so last step. A little bit of protein. All right, so after you cooked your hash browns all the way through, you can kind of just make yourself a little bed. Ooh, that's pretty. Eggs are done. You can see here, a little sunny side up. The best thing to put on just about anything, maybe not Texas Pete, just hot sauce in general. I love hot sauce. And there you have it. That don't look good, I don't know what does. Took me a lot longer than usual because I had to film all this, so that's cool. Um, but uh, anyway, it's, let's see how it tastes. That's pretty damn good. All right, now I gotta clean this place up before Adrian comes home and Roundhouse kicks me in the teeth.